Hey there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here once again. Now, for quite a while now, I've been talking cheerfully to you about GPS and GNSS units. And that's because, well, for one, we release a lot of GNSS units. But for two, I love them. I think they're so cool. I mean, seriously, think about this technology for a minute. Now, I know for a lot of you, you're young enough that GPS has been a reality your entire lives. But for those of us who are slightly more seasoned, those of us who remember driving around with a map in the glove compartment of our cars, or if we were making a cross-country trip, an atlas in the back seat, those of us who, if we wanted to go out camping in the back country, had to go get topo maps and all that stuff, to go from that to having real-time positioning data in the palm of our hands, it's an amazing feat. And since we're releasing a new GNSS board, I'm going to tell you about it exuberantly as always. Introducing the new SparkFun Neo F10 and GNSS L1 L5 breakout. Now, like all of our GNSS boards, this one comes with different options and capabilities. I mean, what would be the sense of releasing a board that just did the same thing as the last one? But I think some of these are going to be really impressive and really catch the attention of a lot of you out there. Come on, let's take a look. The Neo F10N on this module is a standard precision receiver with meter level positional accuracy built on the U-Blocks F10 dual band GNSS technology using L1 and L5 band signals. The default configuration on the Neo F10N offers concurrent reception of GPS, Galileo, and Beidou with SBAS enabled. It can be configured to receive Navic signals as well, and can also be configured for a subset of the above GNSS constellations to achieve lower power consumption. One of the primary differences between this board and most of our other U-Blox GNSS boards is that the Neo F10N module supports NMEA and UBX, but it only does so over a single serial UART communication port. We included a CH340 USB to serial converter to allow you to easily connect the board to a computer's USB port, and we've added ESD protection diodes for the USB data lines. For users connecting the board's serial UART pins to a microcontroller or radio, you will need to cut the USB TX and USB RX jumpers to avoid bus contention. And since we're talking about jumpers, in addition to the USB transmit and receive jumpers, there are also jumpers for USB shield, USB 5 volt, measure, external 3.3 volt, power LED, and PPS LED. The end of the board sports an integrated SMA connector to allow you to easily connect your antenna, while the other end has the USB-C connector for power and communication. The board will accept 5 volt or 3.3 volt input, but all logic is 3.3, with current pulling between 21 and 26 milliamps, depending on things like how many constellations we're reading from or its tracking state. There's an AP2112K 3.3 volt 600 milliamp voltage regulator, and a small backup battery to help with hot starts. And a hot start will reduce your time to first fix from about 28 seconds down to about 2 seconds. Great work, tiny battery. It offers a maximum navigation rate for a single GNSS configuration of 20 Hz, with positional accuracy of about 1.5 meters, and time pulse accuracy of 30 nanoseconds. Now this board does have its limits, and here they are. It can operate at a force of up to 4 Gs, a maximum altitude of 80 kilometers, or a little under 50 miles, and a maximum velocity of 500 meters per second, or a whopping 1,118 miles per hour. There are a number of software configurability options too, like baud rate, odometer, spoof detection, external interrupt, pin control, and a bunch more, and you can do some digging into that to look up the rest of them in our hookup guide. There are a pair of LEDs, one for power and one for PPS. And finally, the board measures 50.8 by 38.1 millimeters, not including the SMA connector jutting out at the end and weighs in at just 9.75 grams, again, not including the SMA connector. And by my quick and dirty measurements, the SMA connector expands the length to about 58.4 millimeters and the weight to about 9.95 grams. So, let's talk about this board. Most GPS and GNSS modules that are dual band use L1 and L2. However, this one uses the newer L5. Now, L5 signals fall within the protected ARNS frequency band. That's the Aeronautical Radio Navigation System and therefore there's less RF interference, leading to better signal integrity. This frequency, 1176.45 MHz, as opposed to the 1227.6 MHz frequency of L2, gives you a much more reliable signal, especially in urban environments, due to its longer wavelength. In fact, out in the clear, L2 and L5 receivers show pretty similar accuracy results. However, it's in urban settings, or settings with increased physical or electronic interference, that we really start to see the benefits of L5. Here, I've got a little visualization to help demonstrate. Please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. Okay, so here's me. 
Now let's say I'm using one of my L1, L2 dual band GNSS modules. Now, if I'm here in the town square, as far as accuracy goes, I should be pretty okay because I've got a clear view of the sky, not a lot of people around me. However, if I head over here, down 2nd Street, here I may start to see issues with accuracy and I may start to lose my GNSS signal altogether. Now there are a few reasons for this. There is electromagnetic interference, or EMI, and this can be caused by cell phones, by two-way radios, or other wireless communication devices. Now there's RFI, radio frequency interference, and this can be caused by unintentional sources such as large radio transmitters or intentional sources like a signal jammer. There is also, and this is probably the biggest one in a situation like this, in these concrete canyons, there's frequency interference or signal bounce. Now this happens when we lose direct line from our satellite. So we've got our satellite signal, it's coming down here, but whoop, now it's hitting a building, we're not getting it, but it is bouncing off the structures around us. Well, this delays the time it takes to, to get to our receiver and thus messes with the accuracy of our GNSS receiver. And finally, there are ionospheric or atmospheric interferences, and these are things that affect the Earth's atmosphere, even temporarily, like ionospheric or tropospheric delay. Now, of course, those aren't limited to urban settings, but they're just one more factor when combined with the other three that can really start to mess with the accuracy of your GNSS. So now, let's say I switch over to L1, L5, and see why this is going to help us. L5 has a lower frequency than L1 or L2, so it has a longer wavelength. Now this allows it to pass through obstacles such as cloud cover, trees, and even buildings more effectively. Now this means less interference, less signal bouncing, and more accurate readings. Additionally, the proprietary dual band multipath mitigation technology of the F10 allows it to take the best signals from both bands for much greater positional accuracy in urban environments. And since L5 is the most recent addition to the global positioning system, this board is pretty much future-proof as L5 is set to remain the standard. Uh, we have created an Arduino library for the Neo F10N, but you can also use uBlocks' incredible Windows program, uCenter. This will allow you to simply connect to the proper COM port and instantly see a ton of information coming in without having to do much of anything. However, the depth of this program is such that even the Marianas Trench looks at it and thinks, wow, that's deep. So you can go as simple or as complex as you want with this new board. Now I know that is a lot of information, and to be honest, there is still a ton more I didn't even touch on, but hopefully I've piqued your curiosity. Now if you do want to dig in deeper, you can always take a look at our product page or our hookup guide. You can also go over to uBlocks, take a look at their product summary, their integration manual, and even all the information they have on utilizing uCenter. Uh, one more thing. Now I talked a lot about how great L5 is in concrete canyons, but I know that not all of us live in major metropolitan cities. However, that does not mean we can't take advantage of L5. I know for me, I live half a day's drive from some of the greatest slot canyons in the world. In fact, even closer, El Dorado Canyon, a super steep, deep canyon right down the road from Sparkman headquarters. So whatever your surroundings, you can take advantage of L5 with the new Sparkfun Neo F10N GNSS L1 L5 breakout. Pick up yours over on our website. And as always, stay safe, be kind, happy travels, and happy hacking. Information they have on utilizing U Center. U Center. Or other. Uh, the L5 signals fall within the pretty similar accuracy results. I don't want to stumble like that. Two, I really love them. I mean, I do.